Let's do it. The school of fish. Fish for lunch. Or as it's now known. Fish at six. I am your congenial host, Mike Fisher, on a red hot Friday. As uh, we sit in the not acoustically perfect fishbowl. Where... The one room where Marsha doesn't get to rule. I'm in charge of the fishbowl. Of course, you know, her picture is a big part of it. But I'm in charge of the fishbowl, I tell you. I rule. I determine. I get to look at a glorified and glamorized look at myself. The Cowboys have new sack leaders, and the NFL has new sack leaders. What? Uh, We will play with that. And since we're talking about sacks, uh, look at everybody lined up tonight. I appreciate that. We're talking about sacks, and we're talking about Cowboy sacks. All right, what are our present number of views? How many, how many us's are there, in other words, is what I'm asking you. 31-6. Uh, we all made ourselves, as a, as a team, as a group, we made ourselves a promise, did we not? Uh, yeah, we are at 30,600. This needs a good home. This thing is fresh. And when you're talking about great NFL sack artists, uh, and great NFL players and great Cowboys. That's right. Ed Tutal Jones signed this helmet. Who wants it? All you have to do to be eligible to win the Ed Tutal Jones signed helmet is to be a subscriber. It's free to subscribe. Hit the like button. Yes, that's also free. Join the Uncle Fish Club Premium. Okay, that's a couple bucks. Uh, purchase a T-shirt out of the Uncle Fish merchandise store. Okay, that's a couple bucks. But this is free. The minute it is beautiful, isn't it, Ethan? I mean, it is. Everything about it's beautiful. The minute we reach thirty-one thousand subscribers, a subscriber wins this. Now, Stanley Alexander, how do you get it? Well, we got to we, we got to get to thirty one subscribers, thirty one thousand subscribers. So, there's thirty thousand of us in here. If thirty thousand of us would go tell one friend, and and listen, I know you, and you know me. We have friends. I know you have one. Go tell one friend who likes football, likes the Cowboys, likes the Mavericks of basketball, come into the uh, Fish Channel and uh, learn a little something and teach me something as well. There's Ed Tutal Jones. Oh, Ed! Now it's damaged goods. No, no, it's not. It's uh, uh, individually packed for your protection and for Ed's. So we're 400 away. Let's go. Speaking of sack artists, the NFL... Actually, it wasn't the NFL. It was an independent group that went through, and I guess you got to go through and look at every single play of every single game back before the NFL took uh, official sack totals. And so before we get to the numbers and uh, a bunch of hellos, Raymond Motley says, I've met uh, Ed Tutal Jones in person. He's an awesome individual. Broken Halo, I need your address, Mike. I will send you those items I talked about. Uh, Our mailing address is 2412 Foxwood, Little Elm, Texas, 75031. But the best way to do that is to really just uh, come find us at PayPal which is where you order your Stars and Strife book. $30, make sure your mailing address is in there. And then the way you find me at PayPal is dbmrfish19 at yahoo.com. Stanley says, my wife's a Steelers fan, but I am trying to get her to subscribe. 
she subscribes, that gets you one inch closer to you getting too tall. What kind of a marriage you got here? Dallas Cowboys are ahead by six points. I picture this. Under two minutes left. The Hurt family just pitched in by joining the Uncle Fish Club at the straight dope level. That's right. Fish out, straight dope, exclusive, exclusive, CowboysSI.com. There's all kinds of ways to make your body happy on a Friday night. Cowboys up by six, less than two minutes remaining. The hated opponent is driving inside your 30. It's fourth and 10. Which Dallas Cowboy do you want rushing the passer? Ready? Go. The Hurt family says, I'm supporting my man, Fish. Thank you. Upgraded. I appreciate her. Oh, or, yeah, the Hurt family uh, was already Uncle Fish Premium, and now they're uh, moved up a notch. G says, I have no problem with my son being a fan of other sports teams, but he'll always be a Cowboy fan for life. I'll buy that. Kenneth McCarroll says, give me that too tall Jones helmet. I just might under... 400 conditions. Let's get us 400 more of us. And as our reward, look at this. I knew this pillow would come in handy. Look at that. I am like a professional craftsman. Oh, man. Look at the fascinating boats. Let me uh, rejigger this. And I'm going to read your vote. You guys, this is fascinating. All time Cowboy roster. James Small just upgraded his membership to the exclusive, exclusive Wowzer. Oh, God. Sweet. Thank you. Uh, that couple of bucks that you throw in there. First of all, it's probably going to buy me a new pair of uh, these. Uh, readers. But second of all, how do you think we get to, you think, you think people just give this to me? Well, no, not really. But I'm going to give it to you when we get to 31,000 uh, Fish Report subscribers. All right. It's fourth and 10. You need a sack. Who in Cowboys history do you want rushing the quarterback? Okay. And I'm going to give you some numbers and we're going to have a discussion about it. Chris Killen says, give me D Ware. David Beatty says, I like the straight dope, especially on Friday night. Uh, some people might be thinking we're talking about this roster, and Randy Gregory gets the nomination. Sack 77 says, give me the manster. Wildcat and Stu say, on this team, give me Gregory. Interesting because Tank Lawrence, a minute ago anyway, was in the Cowboys top 10 all time. Too tall, says Rollins Reviews. Harvey Martin says, G. A lot of votes for Harvey Martin. Charles Haley, says Bill Matrenko. Charles Haley is a good vote. Rowan Donahue pitches in $5 to make sure that we understand it's Haley in all capital letters. Now, you'll notice the very specific parameters here. I didn't say which one would you want on your team for his career. I didn't say which one you want on your team for a season. That might be a different guy. For instance, Charles Haley, in the Michael Irvin interview we did the other day, in which he said Charles Haley helped make our roster responsible, which is ironic, and I'll just stop there. But having Charles Haley on your team was challenging. Having DeMarcus Ware on your team was not challenging. It was delightful. Hey, Casa says, fish, what happened to machine gun fish? I will uh, bring it back. Machine gun fish will be perfect for training camp because, you know, I'll have 10 minutes and 100 things to say. But, you know, you know me. I'm trying not to defend anybody. 
Darren, I met Too Tall Jones. Uh, I'm 6'3", he made me look like a midget. Zach says, I met Too Tall, the Manster, and Harvey Martin at the Playboy Club when I was about seven years old. What? Your dad brought you to the Playboy Club when you were seven, Zach. Shamoobledong says, Mike is my fisher. Farrell, who's an uh, Uncle Fish premium subscriber. Fish, I'm ready to get your book. Let's go. Stars and Strife, PayPal, DBMRFish19 at yahoo.com. $30 in, handles everything. Marsha, boom, boom, boom. And uh, make sure you put your mailing address in there and we'll get it right to you. Geo says, what's the word on trading Chris Evans for Zingas? There's a video right there in which you see me talking to kid Nico and then Cuban wants his two cents. Go find that video. It's right down there. Thank you, James Small, for jumping in. Harvey Martin has the qualifications to be in the Hall of Fame. I know. I know. And let's hurry up. Ethan says, here in Kansas, we get made fun of for being Cowboy fans. Why? Because the Jayhawks are so successful in football? What? Bill says, Haley put fear in the opponent. Didn't Harvey? Didn't Too Tall? Didn't Randy? Martin uh, Jr. says, how about Micah Parsons on the come? Zach Nichols says, the reason I was at the Playboy Mansion when I was seven is my mom was a bunny. Zach, uh, Zach, we need to know how old are you now? How old are you now? And then, then we'll decide whether or not we want to see pictures <laughs> of your mom, the bunny. Uh, Double Star, what about batted balls? Another statistic that Hall of Fame selectors don't seem to understand the importance of. Jay Bursick is an Uncle Fish premium subscriber. Sup, Fish? Richard B. is in Syracuse, New York. Okay, the stats say that it's D-Ware. No, Phil Morgan, not Danny Noonan. I knew Danny Noonan there for a minute, though. Pro Football Reference is uh, the folks that did the research and D Ware remains on the top of the Cowboys heap, but the gap between D Ware and the rest of the group that used to chase quarterbacks. And now for a minute there got to chase D Ware. Now we have more inclusive numbers, not perfect numbers because this is an imperfect stat. Even now, what happens when one and a half guys get one? Stanley says, too tall is my frat brother. Mm, sweet. Tommy Buster is a premium subscriber. It says, you know, one play, one time to rush the passer. What about Woody? Rahman checks in from Bangladesh. This program is huge in Bangladesh because Rahman is spreading the word. Big fan. Zach. Zach, you are, you are a fountain of information tonight. Zach Nichols says, my mom was a Playboy bunny when she was 22. I went to the mansion with her when I was seven. Diddly, 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 ding. My calculator brain. All right, fine. And Zach, and how old are you now? Hollywood Henderson gets to be on the list. Bottom line, D. Ware maintains his lead as the Dallas all-time sack leader. 117, but numbers two through seven have been juggled. The new Dallas Cowboys second all-time sack leader is Harvey Martin with 114. He's followed by the Manster with 111. Then come Too Tall, George Andre, Jethro Pugh, Bob Lilly, and Jim Jeffcoat is in this group. I think Jim Jeffcoat might have been number two before they readjusted. 
Yeah, I've got Harvey for 114, double star, correct. The Cowboys active leader is D-Law, 45 and a half. He's been shoved out of the top 10. He'll get his chance to catch up. And other things have changed around the league. The new Washington all-time sack leader instead of Ryan Kerrigan is now Dexter Manley. Michael Strahan is no longer the single season record holder. What did he have? 22 and a half in 2001. And didn't Brett Favre lay down for him once? I just give him one. But now Bubba Baker, Lions, he had 23 in 1978, according to the new calculations. Bubba Baker is the new single season <clears throat> NFL leader. Bubba Baker, who uh, played at Colorado State and was the first guy I ever saw this is, I mean, I must have been 18. I'm just a naive uh, young boy who had the clothes hanger tattoo. Uh, hey, we're, you're in a frat now. You got to get a tattoo like the rest of us. And I don't remember what it was. It seemed like it was a big squiggly eight. Golly. No, I don't have any tattoos. I don't want a, to get branded with a big clothes hanger. And I don't even want a little tiny star on my ankle. I don't want a Viking head on my butt. I don't want this end up on my crotch. I don't want any of it. It just seems like it hurts. Double star, you're spitting out all kinds of numbers at me. So um, please show me that Harvey Martin had 23 in 1977. Please tell me if that's according to the new calculations or the old. And, uh, and Sachs says the same thing. But what I'm asking you guys is, is that the old calculation or the new? And if it's the new and he gets, and Harvey Martin gets 23 in one year, according to the new calculations, we're going to throw a damn party around here and I'm going to give away Ed Tutal Jones's hat. Rowan Donahue has his order of Stars and Strife, the book. Go to PayPal, dbmrfish19 at yahoo.com. He says, uh, he says, PayPal is now on the clock. If you've ordered it, she's a coming. Did I not? I told the Ratliff Colombo story. Rowan, maybe we'll get to training camp and I'll tell it again. Um, you know what I'd really like to do is get one of the other offensive linemen who were there to tell it. And there's a certain former offensive lineman who goes out to dinner with us uh, once a year in Oxnard. So let me work on that. Phil Morgan, no tats. My tastes change. Yeah, I know. Uh, Justin, tattoos are overrated. Carlos, 915, Denver Cowboys Nation owns Denver. I'm an old Greeley, Colorado man. I know what you mean. There's one copy of The Boys Are Back on eBay. So it's Bill. Buy it. I've got a few copies. I've got a copy of Boys Are Back, the other uh, book that we, I wrote with Richie Witt. It's his coffee table book. It's gorgeous. And get a, I, I, I might have shown it to you one night. It's got like 40 autographs in it because it's a coffee table book. So it's like a picture book. There's great writing in it. Don't get me wrong. But uh, by the picture of Tony Tolbert, Tony Tolbert signs it. By the picture of Emmett Smith, Emmett Smith signs it. Now that thing, I might never give it away. But, you know, maybe when we get to a million subscribers, Jim says, I was a, in a bar band rock star guy, so I kind of had to get a tattoo. But number one, the, your taste changed. Number two, things sag. Now, this thing's not going to sag. I might get a tattoo right there. That's not going anywhere. But, you know, things change. Uh, Richard Sherman, speaking of wild and unfortunate nights, has come out with an apology. And at this point, you're starting to recognize that, yeah, there's a mental health thing there. And when you're considering Dan Quinn and all the people that know him and all the things that have not happened contractually, just like we know, I know why nobody's signing Earl Thomas. Is this why nobody signed Richard Sherman? I've seen a lot of people defend, listen, don't defend Richard Sherman and don't attack Richard Sherman. This is a mental health issue. The defense of Richard Sherman is, oh, everybody gets drunk. 
Well, first of all, that's not true. Everybody does not get drunk. But um, the video of him at his in-law's front door is not, oh, everybody gets drunk. It's frightening. It's frightening for his family and it's frightening for him. So, um, as I said to Marcia the other day, she was asking me what happened with Richard Sherman. I thought, you know, he was a, had a reputation as a quality guy and stuff, which he does. And by the way, he, he, he may be. And I said, you know, the movie, the hangover, she watched the hangover and uh, Marcia, and you know her by now a little bit. She is not, uh, she is not a buddy comedy. She is not a gross out. She is not a, she, that's not her, that's not her jam. She sat there and watched Hangover and loved it. It's the only movie like that that she ever liked. And one of the reasons is because it's, it's really well done. But I said to her, the Richard Sherman story is like the movie, The Hangover, only not funny. Richard Sherman and listen, a couple of you guys are saying, hey, we, we've given players, the Cowboys have given players with, uh, with challenges in this area, chances, no doubt. There's no doubt. And that's worked out way worse than Jerry thinks it has. The Cowboys have this unjustified pride in their ability to turn a guy around. They don't turn a guy around more, more often than anybody else. The team, you know, the team that manages it the best, and I'm not saying they fix players. The team that manages it the best is Seattle. They had Earl Thomas and Richard Sher Seattle. That organization does what this organization thinks it does. They take bad apples and go and win 10 games every year. This team takes, again, bad apples. And you, you, you got to understand the air quotes. Supposed trouble. Suppo the Seattle Seahawks take that guy and win 10 games. The Cowboys take that guy and win eight. That's a fact. So Richard Sherman, whether it's mental health, drunkenness, a substance abuse problem, which listen, by the time you are bashing down, physically bashing down your in-law's front door, you, you do have a drinking problem. Zach Nichols says he looks more pissed off than pissed drunk. I, I won't judge that. But how do you get that pissed off? So pissed off that you're willing to, to break both your arms and broke your shoulders. And then, and by the way, I don't have all the information in front of me. Um, but, and I'm trying to, I'm not trying to say this in a humorous way. Richard Sherman must have woke up the next morning and said, I drove what into what? I bashed down into who? I yelled what at whom? Why are there dog bites all over my legs? The hangover for not funny version. James Small wonders why hundreds of people are watching and not enough people are hitting the thumbs up. The thumbs up thing that I've come to understand when you hit the like button, it beats the algorithms. And so Cowboy Nation gets to know more about what we do. Uh, YouTube wants to reward us if we hit the thumbs up uh, in a wonderful way. So please do that. Not for my ego, uh, but for teammanship. No, Rowan, I'm not saying he broke his arms. I'm saying he risked breaking his arms. If you stick out your fingers, hands, wrists, arms, and shoulders and decide you're going to go charging as fast and as hard as you can into a door repeatedly, you are risking injury. For what reason? And I don't know that. Um, Bill Matrenko and others can start listing I, guys. I, I, I appreciate it. Pac-Man Jones, Demetrius Underwood. I, I know. Alonzo Spellman. Keep going. And Bill, you're my guy. 
But what's your point? Let's do your list again. Pac-Man Jones, did it work? Okay, I'm gonna, I might need your help here, but I'm gonna try to do this off the top of my head. Pac-Man Jones, did it work? Terrell Owens, did it work? Demetrius Underwood, did it work? on and on and on with we're going to we're going to fix this guy we're we're special as the hurt family quotes me uh, as i've called it second chance valley ranch jerry and people on his staff think we're special greg hardy did it work randy gregory has it worked now, he's on your team now, so you want it to work, but has it worked in terms of football production? David Irving, did it work, really, in the end? Justin saying Jerry gave him a chance, and I know, but did they, did the player come here, did the player come here with an issue did he come here and get the issue straightened out, become a productive football player and a productive member of society, and then leave here and continue to be so? No, 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 no. Rolando McClain, and I had great conversations with Rolando McClain, but he, he, he was faking it the whole time. I had good conversations with Greg Hardy he got in trouble. In the parking lot, he got in trouble. Rolando McClain went and took a break from football and went back to Alabama and um, got involved, allegedly, in the purple drank and then allegedly somehow burned down his house, allegedly. Who got fixed? Bill Matrinko makes an interesting point. Jimmy got Haley to work hard, and maybe that causes Jerry to think, hey, we'll just bring guys here and tell them to work hard, and it'll get fixed. This organization, certainly previous to Mike McCarthy, who has brought in a couple other fellows and, and I don't know, we don't know, you know, we're not that the COVID thing prevented us from knowing as much as we usually do. But previous to that, listen, I'll, I'll do the Randy Gregory thing and then I'll close with this because I, I, I want this to be a, a happy celebratory night in which we get 400 new followers and I give you too tall. Okay. I will tell you this story. They bring Randy Gregory here. Jerry touts Randy's innate intelligence, which is true. He's a bright, was a bright kid. <clears throat> He's a bright guy. There's issues with, you know, the, the, the sweetheart and the family. <clears throat> and I don't just mean the family that he, I don't, you know, I don't just mean dating. I mean, his family issues. They move Randy Gregory into an apartment. Darwin, Randy, Darwin says Randy Gregory seems to have turned the corner, but still has to prove it on the field. This is, I, I, I know, I'm no expert on any of this. You know, that one day at a time, that's real. That, I know that, that's real. So, Randy Gregory had a good day yesterday, good. Now, now he's gotta do it today for himself, not just about football, for himself. They gave Randy Gregory a roommate. I ordered your book, Fish, just now. I made one mistake and put my name as the recipient. 
but we're going to figure it out. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll check the PayPal um, and, and we'll make it right. Go to PayPal, find dbmrfish19 at yahoo.com. $30 gets the whole thing taken care of. Make sure you put your mailing address in there and we will get it, uh, the book right to you. You will love it. Uh, the reviews, I think we are about 400 out of 400 with you guys saying, wow, this is, this is good. This is awesome. Never knew. They move Randy into an apartment and they realize that he needs mentorship, companionship. He needs a friend. He needs a guy. Okay. It's nothing against, nothing against the kid and it's nothing against Randy. The Cowboys second chance Valley Ranch system caused them to move in a guy that was basically a, a, a ball boy. They put a ball boy in there with him. And I think he might've worked in quality control or, you know, they put, they put a guy in there who was the same age as Randy. That's his mentor. That's his big brother. Steve C says, I've had many conversations with Randy's aunt and she says he's even more determined than ever. I'm, I root for Randy Gregory as a person first. Uh, he and I got a little crossways a few months ago and that saddens me. I, I, I think he misunderstood something that I was trying to say. And I don't want anybody to misunderstand this. The Cowboys thought that the Cowboys by themselves make things special. They took a low level employee who's the same age as Randy and assigned him to go be Randy's mentor. What did this kid have as qualifications? Psychology degree? No. Teaching certificate? No. Was he a dentist? A veterinarian? Was he even a parent? No, 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 no. He was just a kid. And when Randy Gregory, those first couple of years, said, I'm going out, what was this kid supposed to do, tackle him? When Randy Gregory said, I'm going in the bathroom and then stayed in the bathroom for a long time, a long time, what was this kid supposed to do? Bash down the door? The Cowboys completely botched their attempts, well-meaning attempts to help Randy Gregory. They have people in that building had, and to some degree still have, people in that building who have titles who don't do anything, who didn't help him. And then they grab one kid whose assignment was to help him. It was just some kid. So I, I urge the Cowboys to take this more seriously. I urge the NFL to not just use the guy like a piece of hamburger, ground him up, eat him up, spit him out. Uh, and I pray for the guys who have mental health challenges, like some of the people we're talking about tonight. Uh, and Randy Gregory has been very open about his challenges. And I am I root for him as a person. And I'm happy for him as a player. And I look forward to seeing him in Oxnard. I would love to have Randy Gregory do some of the things that this guy did. So someday I'm giving you a chance to win an autographed Randy Gregory helmet. Wouldn't that be nice? Tell your friends, come get fish. Come get this. Go to Oxnard. Uh, but we'll be with you all night, Friday night, and all weekend as well. Fish. Burp. Out.